We've all been given promises in God's word. But it is up to us to now claim those promises. On today's Move Your Mountain, you're going to hear a word from the Lord that I believe is going to help you to do that. Some anointed worship. So we're going to take Holy Communion together and then we're going to pray over all of your prayer requests today. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss today's program. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Welcome everyone to Move Your Mountain and a blessed Mother's Day weekend to all of you moms. Uh, I know my mom's already in heaven with the Lord, but if your mom is still alive, why don't you just, uh, the Bible says all of her children will rise up and call her blessed. Maybe you have a spiritual mom that's had an impact in your life. Why don't you bless her as well? Well, we're excited to be with you today. I'm Pastor Gary here with Pastor Myra Bell, Pastor Jonathan Schaefer, and Pastor Rebecca Luker. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good day. Good day. Glad to be here. Looking forward to what God is getting ready to do in your life today. Amen. Amen. And to all you moms out there, Happy Mother's Day, spiritual moms, biological moms, adoptive moms, you know, grandmas that stepped in and became moms, <laughs> whoever right. you are, aunties, cousins, whoever you are, we just want to honor you. Thank you for raising up the next generation. Pastor Rebecca, I'm glad that God didn't pick men <laughs> to be moms. <laughs> I'm glad that women, because because it is such an amazing and powerful reality. And I am just so thankful to all the ladies for being moms. Amen, me too. And I agree with you. There is a difference in that <laughs> role. So I am thankful for that too. And my prayer is that today, as we are bringing this program to you, that you just feel God's presence and his mm. power and you get encouragement. You moms out there, grandmothers, even grandfathers and dads, everyone that's watching, that you just get encouraged about what God is doing in your life and what he is going to do. That's our goal today, to bring you closer to him and let you see God for who he really is in your life. Amen. We want to remind you that we do have prayer partners available. The number is always there on your screen, 888-665-443. If it's anything we're going to discuss today or if it's just anyone or anything on your heart, call that number. A prayer partner is going to agree with you. Then they're going to bring all the requests over to the altar. We always conclude our time together. The four of us are going to set ourselves in agreement for your miracle. Amen. And then we're also going to take Holy Communion together. We love communion oh, here. Yes, yes, yes. It's always about remembering what Christ did. Mm -hmm. If you focus on what he did, then the problems all around us don't seem such uh, so great or so massive if we yeah. focus on him. So communion does that, at least for me. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you get your elements, a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup so that you can participate with us. Well, we got a good word for you today. The book of Joshua chapter one says there in verse one, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel, and then he says this, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. 
Now notice what he says. He says, I've already given it to you, but now you have to go take possession of it. Of course, that was a physical land. That was the Canaan promised land. You and I have spiritual promises. The Bible is full of promises. Mm -hmm. They've already been given to us, but now we have to claim them. We have to, number one, put our foot down in authority and claim what God has promised us. Absolutely, and, and one of the things about this is that it reminds us that the kingdom advances. There's motion in the kingdom. Right. And when we're unwilling to move, when we wanna stay stagnant, where we wanna plant our roots, where we plant our feet, this word is a good strong reminder that wherever the sole of your foot treads, so that means the more you move, the more land you're claiming and taking for yourself. And so maybe even right now, we're talking about a spiritual kingdom. And for some of you watching, you might not be able to physically get up and move around, but don't let that keep you stable and stationary in the spirit. Begin to pray, begin to dream. Begin. The Bible talks about young men ha having visions and old men dreaming dreams. So wherever you are on that age spectrum, you keep your spiritual momentum moving forward, calling forth the, the promises of God, bringing forth the things for generations, your offspring, your descendants. There's, there's no greater word on Mother's Day than to talk about getting land for your offspring and descendants. That's right. And I love that encouragement that you're giving right now because this scripture is packed full of so many different points that we could bring out, but that is so good. Knowing that future generations, you can, you can impact those yes. that are going beyond you, after you've already passed on, after you've laid down all this foundation for your children, there's so much more that you can give to them. You know, I think about Joshua in that place where he's right at that river's edge. He could have stayed where he was. He could have looked back behind and said, I can't go in on anymore. The one that I looked up to, the one that I, I sought after, he's gone. The one that people that led the people, he's gone. I don't know what to do now. But instead of staying there in that place, he said, I'm gonna heed the word of the Lord because God told me to move forward. I know there's a promise ahead for me and I have to receive that promise. I have to attain that promise. It's my, my going forward helps the, those that are going, coming behind yes. me, the children of Israel. It helps them to advance and receive the promise that God has given to us. So I want to encourage you, those of you that might be in that place of decision, do I keep looking back behind me of what's, what's gone on in the past? Maybe you've lost your parent. Maybe you've lost someone precious to you that you felt they're the ones that I had to look to for support. No, you look to Jesus. You look to God. Like Pastor Gary said earlier, there is so much that he has for the, his children if we desire to attain it, if we desire to go after it. So today you have to make that decision. Do you stay where you are or do you put your foot down into that land that God has promised you knowing there is some something greater. Those children knew that there was something that God had promised, so they weren't going to stay where they were. I challenge you. We challenge you today. Move forward in Christ. Go after those things yes. that he has. Pastor Meyer, there's so much better for us yes. than yes. where we are right now. The yes. future is so great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you were both talking, I, I thought about that scripture that says the steps of a good man are ordered mm. by the Lord. Mm. A lot of times we might think, well, I'm not leading people uh, into some promised land or I'm not doing this or that, but God's promise in his word is that the steps of a good man mm -hmm. are ordered by the Lord. So let God order your steps. I like what you were saying about move, yeah. move, right. just move in God, being available, Pastor Gary, to allow him to direct our paths. You might not think that it's important, but in the kingdom, yes. Whatever yeah. you do to obey God, to do what he said, do, put your foot down. I'm going to do this. That's it. Even putting your foot down toward the devil. Yeah. That's right. I'm doing this. Uh -huh. yep. You're not going to stop me. Amen. I am not going to That's stop. Right. And he always tries to stop us. Yes, yeah, he does. does. But the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Let him order your steps. Let him Amen. order your steps. And he promised he will be with us. Amen. So what has God promised you? Mm -hmm. What are you still waiting on? You, sometimes we're waiting on God, but really it's God that's waiting on us. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's right. There's somebody watching right now and there's a piece of property or a building that God has called you to. 
And I believe that this is, this is a good word, this is a good time for you to go out and march that property, to physically walk that land and decree and declare the promises of God over that place. So whatever it is for, for a business, a ministry, uh, a new home, a home for your children, I believe that God is calling you to do that. You know, we, we used to do stuff like that. We used to, people, and then you say, oh, you get away from me. Yeah. You say, well, that's, that's how, no, no, I, I believe that there's power in physically manifesting what God has called you to do because it, rem, it doesn't remind God that he's given you a promise. It reminds you, and then you go before God and say, God, I'm here for you. That's yeah. good. That's good. All right, let's go on. It says in Joshua 1, verse 8, this book of the law or the word, let's just say the word, mm -hmm. shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. That word meditate means to mutter. Meditate's the middle. You got to keep that word of God, you got to meditate on it day and night. Keep it in the center of your thoughts, of your mind, of your attention. Why? Because that is the key, number two, to a successful life. Mm -hmm. Who isn't looking to be successful? Right. Who, who doesn't mm -hmm. want their life to be blessed and successful? And God says the key to success is just one simple thing meditating on that word so that when you meditate on it then you're able to do it yeah yeah, yeah. that's right if we could just grasp that concept pastor here because i think so many times we try to put our things into the into the mix and don't understand that God is just, he's laying it out for us. He's giving us the answer right now as we're talking. He's giving you the answer that you need right now to have success in life. Mm -hmm. And it's not success as man deems it. I'm not saying success as in materialism mm -hmm. because right. that's not success. In the kingdom of God, that is not success. Success is saying, God, I'm doing what you've called me to that's do. Right. I'm being that's obedient it. to you. That's what true success for a child of God is. So if you want to know how to have a successful life, and can I tell you that when you're being obedient to God, you'll get the blessings of God as well. He'll prosper you in other areas of your life. But the key to that is speaking the word of God, is having it hidden in your heart and applying it to your life. We can say it all we want, but if we're not applying it to our lives, to our actions, to the things that we are desiring, even in our own family, if you're not applying the word of God to your family, if you're just letting them go out there and do whatever they want and not pulling in the rain saying, there are boundaries that God has set up for our family. We can't be like the world. Our family can't make the same decision that the world makes because we want to have success in the kingdom of God. We want people to see that we love God and you have to make sure that you put those boundaries on your family too. If you want your children to be successful, if you want your grandchildren to be successful, if you want your marriage to be successful, meditate on the word of God. Let the word of God be that thing that directs you, that tells you what to do and what not to do. I hear a lot of people saying, well, God speaks to me in this way or that way. The most profitable way that we can hear God's voice is through his word. That is surety that you know you're hearing from him. So if we're not reading his word, we're doing ourselves an injustice yeah. as people of God because he has so much for us in that. Yeah, you, if you're not reading God's word, you're trying to make a cake without the recipe. Yeah. And even if you're trying to mix your right. thoughts or ideas in with the word of God, look, God's recipe doesn't need any of our ingredients. That's right. It is perfect as is. But I love how Pastor Gary mentioned that, that you've got, it's, it, the word meditate means to mutter because the text didn't say the word in your mouth or in your heart or in your mind. It said in your mouth. It's talking about speaking out the promises of God because faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm. hearing by the word of God. And so there are times when God is gonna call you to things and maybe you're sitting there right now and God has called you to something that just seems like so out of left field or so unrealistic. A, a group of former slaves taking a land full of giants <laughs> seems ridiculous. Yeah. That's why God said you need to have this word in your mouth. Mm -hmm. 
So when you're challenged, when you're worried, when you're scared, when you've, you're remembering the word and the promises of God mm -hmm. that remind you to do what point one said, to put your foot down because it's God who's sending you. It's God who's right. doing it. And the key to the successful life is having that word, not mixed with our ingredients, yeah. not mixed with other ideas, but just the pure unadulterated word of God. Because it's not just so that you hear it when you're muttering it, but the people that God has put in your life. I love how you mentioned your children's life. Like they need to hear the word That's of God right. in your mouth. Right. They need to hear it, right? Your spouse needs to hear it. The people at work need to hear it. There mm -hmm. are people in your life that need to right. hear it because that word produces faith. And that's why you will not, I always like, what's the chapter and verse? <laughs> <laughs> what's the chapter? Or somebody comes to me with a crazy idea. Okay, give me chapter and verse for yeah, that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Or if, if I'm around my kids, I want them to not just see me living the word of God, but speaking, sure. sharing, sure. encouraging them, reminding them of the word of sure. God. Yeah. And I think about, at, I love that particular verse, verse eight. It, it shows that there is success, mm -hmm. That's right. but then there's good success. That's right. That's right. And God's promise to us is that he will give us good success. Mm -hmm. There's an right. element of success that we call success as you were talking about the material things or whatever mm -hmm. man says is successful. Right. But God has a success for us mm -hmm. that if we will walk with him and hear him and allow him to guide us. I, I think about that passage in scripture that says, except the Lord builds the house, yep. they labor in vain. You can have success. You can even know how to do some things. But it says you, that person is laboring in vain except the Lord builds it. So listen, mm -hmm. I allow God. I want God's good success. Yes. I don't want to have to go back and do it over again <laughs> and right. over again. God will give you yes, good success. Amen. Yeah. We, we had growing up when I was living at home with my parents, we had interesting wallpaper. Because my mom used to write scriptures out and stick them on the wall. I mean, you couldn't go to the sink. You yeah. couldn't go to the bathroom. You couldn't be yeah. in our bedrooms, in the mirror, without seeing dozens and dozens wow. and dozens yeah. of scriptures yeah. just taped to the wall. Wow. And, and what you an know, impact. <laughs> growing up, you know, it was kind of annoying to us as <laughs> teenagers and kids. Sure. But I think she, she was putting yeah. the word yeah, yep. before us, trying to get that word in our hearts right. so that we could have good success. Absolutely. And look at you now. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a reality. I mean, that's what Jacob did. That's the plan the Lord gave Jacob when he was breaking free from Laban, where he said to put these striped sticks in front of the mating goats and the lambs right. so that you can have good success. There's, there's something to that. It's, again, it's like the marching around. It's like the setting mm -hmm. our foot to things, man. I believe that God is calling us and challenging us to getting back to some of these things. Maybe they seem silly. Maybe they seem, but, but, but you know what? We got Pastor Gary here. So I, I, think, I think his mom did a good job <laughs> with putting the scriptures up. And so, but whatever it is, keep that word in front of you. That's keep right. it in That's your right. mouth because the power of life and death, you hear it here all the time on this program. Mm -hmm. The power of life and death mm -hmm. is in the tongue. Those who love it, eat of its fruit. Let the word be on your tongue so yeah. that you can speak and see good success. That's right. Remember, if you need prayer, 888-665-4483. Maybe you want to call and just give the first names of your children. Amen. That you just want yeah. the Lord to draw them, to allow their lives to be successful. You want that spiritual legacy that is in you to be transferred and passed off to them. Mm. Prayer makes all the difference right, in the man. world. That's right. And then in Joshua 1 and verse 9, he says, have I not commanded you? Yes. Be strong and of good courage. Mm. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you Amen. wherever you go. Mm -hmm. So think about it. First of all, he says, I've given you these promises. Mm -hmm. So now go out and claim them. Put your foot down. Mm -hmm. Fill your life with the word of God. Meditate, mutter it over and over, day and night. Mm -hmm. That's the key to success. Mm -hmm. And then remember, wherever you go in life, know 
that God is with you. Emmanuel, I love Amen. that. God is with us. Yes, yes. And that reality is just such a wonderful, wonderful thing that God is with us. No matter what goes on, no matter what goes on around us, what happens in our lives, God is with you and he will see you through. Sometimes some of us will kind of complain about having to go through things, but he said, all things work together for good. Yes. We know this. For those who love the Lord, who are the called according to his purpose. And you say, well, I love the Lord and then God is, has not moved this thing. But sometimes God will have you go all the way through a thing yeah. Yeah. so that you can get his comfort, so that you can help somebody else who's in trouble. It works together for their good because they love the Lord and God wants to use you to minister to them because they love the Lord. So God is with you no matter what. Don't forget that he's with you right there in the storms, Amen. in the trials of life, in the good times, in the bad times, he's with you. That's right, yes. Yes. amen. I, I get this picture of like a parent at like an Easter egg hunt with their kids who's with the children, but the, the children are enjoying the hunt. But because the parent, knows where the eggs are because they put the eggs there so that the children could enjoy finding them. They can help the child when they get frustrated. They can help the child when they can't see because maybe their eyesight is too low and the, the egg is too high. And I feel like that's how the promises of God, God has hidden these great and precious promises for us all throughout our lives. And he wants us to have the enjoyment of finding them. And even when we feel like we're not seeing them, even when we want, oh God, I, this, why, this, this, this job's not here, this thing that I'm praying. God is there. And, and if you'll just listen, you'll hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit say, look a little higher, mm -hmm. look over there. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go around there? Because God loves to watch us enjoy finding these things because he enjoys the hunt with us. Amen, he does. And I'm thankful that he, I think, I'm thankful for that because I know in my own life, Pastor Jonathan, there have been times when I have been to my wits end saying, God, mm. I, don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know how I'm gonna handle this situation. And you think when you're in those moments that it's never gonna let up. I mean, in your mind, you know, okay, I'm gonna get over this. But while you're in that season, it feels like it's never gonna, you're never gonna find a reprieve. But I'm on the other side of some of those instances that I've had yes. when I was going through them. And I can tell you today that you will get through it. You're not gonna stay in that valley forever. And like Pastor Myra said, you may have to go through it to the other side, but God is with you through those valleys. He's with you in those darkest moments, just as much as he's with you on those mountaintops when you are rejoicing today. So I wanna encourage you, whatever it is, maybe, maybe you're fearing a marriage that might be failing. Maybe you're fearing that your children aren't in that place that they need to be with the Lord. Maybe you're fearing something that's going on in your health that you can't, you don't have control of. Can I encourage you just as the Lord encouraged Joshua, be strong and Amen. courageous Amen. because the Lord is with you. You may not see it right now with your human eyes, with our frail humanity. We don't mm -hmm. see how it's gonna come about, but God is working even in those times that yes. you might not see it, you might not understand it. You you might feel pain right now, but God is working it out and he is with you at all times. Stand firm. Keep your eyes focused on the promise that says he will never leave you and forsake you. Keep your eyes on that promise that says he's your healer. He's your provider. He's the one who saves and brings salvation to your family. He's the one who says that marriage will come back together in the name of Jesus. Just keep pressing and keep the promises of God in your focus, speaking those promises Amen. of God. And you are going to see that God is with you and he's not going to leave you. He's going to bring you through. Amen. Right. You know, he says, be strong and very courageous. And you know what? You can be when you know yeah. the Lord is That's with right. you. And th there are some of you right now, you're, you're, you, you've been given some, some, some bad news, negative reports about your health. Mm -hmm. Some of you are, are going through challenging times in your finances. Others of you, you're, you're just having just a, a crisis with one of your children or one of your grandchildren. You don't have to be discouraged. Right. Mm -hmm. 
you can be strong and very courageous. Have courage. Don't discourage. Have courage. Why? Why? Because the Lord is Amen. with you. He's yes, with you. Yes, you yes, are not yes, alone. Yes. You are not alone going through this right. challenge today. Yes. Well, Pastor Rebecca, we're going to ask you to go over to the worship set and lead us in a beautiful, Amen. beautiful hymn called Blessed Assurance. Bye. 
the day long Every morning, every evening In the good times, in the bad times I praise you, Lord You've been so good to me This is my story I testify that God is good All the time He saw me and heard my cry Now I am His This is my story Oh, I testify that God is good all the time he saw me and heard my cry oh this is my story I'm gonna testify that God is good all the time he saw me and he heard my cry now I am his and he oh it's my story I'm gonna testify that God is good all the time he saw me and heard my cry that blessed assurance oh today. God. Hey, if you've just joined us, you're watching Move Your Mountain. We've been looking at the story in Joshua where Joshua had to put his foot down and go out and claim the promised land that God had already given to them. To, he, God said, fill your life with my word and that's the only way you're going to have good success. And then God said, remember, you're never ever alone because God is with you. He will never, ever leave you or forsake you. We want to remind you that in just a few moments, we're going to take Holy Communion together. If you don't have your elements, would you get a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup so you can join us? If you need prayer, the number is there, 888-665-4483. So many have called, but many have called back and with answers to prayer. Betsy called. She was depressed. She said she was hearing lots of negative voices speaking to her life and into her mind. She called the prayer partner. The prayer partner really prayed deliverance with her. And she said now she's so grateful she has peace. She's yes. now hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. And she said she feels like she's got gaining Christ confidence. Yes, yes, yes. That's exciting to me because God cares about everything that we deal with. He cares about it. Betsy, I am rejoicing with you. We are rejoicing with you. Thank you for calling back to let us know because God cares where you are at and he will meet you at the point of your need. Amen, amen. My and God. Uh, Jarrell called, she was battling bronchial conditions and she called the prayer partner and the Lord healed her. She's see. now breathing normally again. And uh, Leanne called, the Lord healed her. She touched her as yes, well. Yes, yes, and yes. Barbara called, she said she loves Move Your Mountain. She says everybody on there just is just bl a blessing to her. And she is just grateful that the Lord's healed her blood pressure. She was battling Amen. high blood pressure. He's a healing Jesus, brother. Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes, yes. Like us keep the testimonies coming. We thank you so much for that yes. because it builds our faith. It builds the other people who are viewing that don't have their testimony yet. It builds their faith mm -hmm. and it gives thanksgiving to God. So keep them coming. I, I, I'm still believing God. This is a little crazy, but I'm a faith guy. I'm believing that one day we're going to have an altar full of testimonies Come the on, same yeah. way we have an altar That's full of right. prayer requests Amen. because we have a good God with good promises. Yes. We do, and this is, we're going to get ready to take communion, and that's part of that, you know, yeah. remembering the goodness of God, remembering yeah. what mm -hmm. he has done in our lives, and he is, he's full of promises. There's nothing that you can ask him for that is too great. He yeah. is a mighty God. If he created this universe, he created each and every one of us so different from one mm -hmm. another. There's not mm -hmm. one of us that look 
perfectly the same, even identical with twins. There's something about them that's not the same. But if he had the ability to do that, he has the ability to meet any need that you have in your life according to his will. Amen. 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 Well, you know, we believe in miracles here. And we always say the greatest miracle of all is a changed life. Yep. That's right. And before we take communion, if you do not have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe you've just been disappointed in life. Maybe some people have hurt you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've just been carrying around offenses and yep. hurts and mm -hmm. unforgiveness. You know, unforgiveness. It, it is such a poison in our yes. spiritual lives and bodies. Yes. And you know, when you forgive someone, you're actually giving the gift to yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a gift to yourself because forgiving someone doesn't make them right, That's right. but it makes you free. Yeah. And so if you've never invited Christ into your heart, or if you're away from God, or you're just holding on to something, before we take Holy Communion, we want to make sure yes. that you examine your own heart. Oh David prayed a prayer. He said this, search me, try me, Lord, if there's any wicked way in me and deliver me. King David prayed, create in me a clean heart mm -hmm. and renew a right spirit within me. I always say it's a full-time job keeping your heart right. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, it's tricky because the heart is deceitfully wicked. <clears throat> it's, it's geared to lie to us. It's geared to filter things, but you know what? It's also geared to receive the Lordship of Jesus. And you know, one of the things I love most about the passage of Scripture we just read in Joshua, we, we didn't cover it um, in the Word today, but there's a part where, where God encourages Joshua by saying, as I was with Moses, so too will I be with you. And it's fascinating because a lot of times we read that and we don't understand that up until that point for, for, for 40 years, from the time of the Exodus through all of the wilderness wanderings, God led them in a physical, visible way as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But the moment they entered the promised land, that physical manifestation of God's glory vanished from eyesight. And some of you might be sitting there and, and wondering, where is God? I can't see him. I hear the promises of scripture, but I can't see him. But you know what? God's ways aren't just in a visible, tangible way. He said, I'm gonna be with you, Joshua, the same way I was with Moses. But then it seemed like it changed, but it didn't because God is with us whether we see him or not. And no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through right now, you may have think that God, you, you think that God has left you, he's not there, he's abandoned you. That is a lie from the pit of hell and I bind its power over you right now. And I release the truth. God is with us, he is with you right now. But the only way that you can get closer to God is by allowing him to not just be with you, but inviting him to be in you, in that heart, in that place of confusion, in that place of questioning, in that place of fear and doubt and, and even anger and unforgiveness. The only way that you can handle and deal with those thoughts and feelings is by inviting the King of glory to come into your life. And so if you've never invited Jesus into your life, I just want you to just pray with me real quick and say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that you are there even though I can't see you. I acknowledge that you have always been there. That even in spite of all of my mistakes and failures, you have seen them and you have still loved me through them. You have not abandoned me and you have not left me. But now I want you to come and help fix these things in my life. And so I repent. I turn away from those things. I turn away from those people and places and things that lead me or keep me from you. And I turn to you. I run to you. And in turn, I expect you to come and invade my life. And I open my heart to you now. I open my mind. I open my will. I open everything about me to you. And I just ask you to come and cleanse me by your blood. Forgive me of my sins. Heal me, restore me, change me and make me a new creation. Just like you say in your word. 
and I will serve you the rest of the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to take Holy Communion. Your heart's ready. It's right now. Yeah. Pastor Mara, would you pray over the bread? Pastor Rebecca, over the cup. Father, we thank you for loving us so much that you gave your only begotten Son. Yes. That it pleased you to bruise the Son. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for enduring all the punishment that we would have gotten. The punishment, the wrath of God. You saved us from the wrath of God. And so we remember what you did. Yes, You're giving your body. We thank you for it. And we praise you for all that you've done. We give you glory and we remember even now. Take your cracker, your wafer, your bread, eat of it now and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we just praise you so much for the amazing, wonderful Father that you are. Lord, that you would give your son for each and every one of us, God, undeserving as we are, but yet you still loved us and you saw past all of those issues that we would have in life. You saw past our sinfulness in our lives and how we wouldn't always be doing what you want us to do. And God, you looked past that and you said, I'm gonna send my son Jesus to die for them because I love them, to forgive them of their sins. And God, I thank you that that's what this blood represents today, God. This, this juice that we're taking, God, represents your blood, Jesus that was given so that our sins, every single one of them could be forgiven and we could be in right standing with you, God, that one day we will be able to be reunited with you in glory. And Father, I just thank you. We thank you for the blood, for the sacrifice of your son, Lord, that we can stand boldly and we can enter into your throne room boldly, even asking and petitioning of you today, God, because of the grace that you have shown us. Father, we just thank you for your love. We thank you for the life that you gave us in Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. All right, take your cup, drink of it now, and be washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, God. And just receive all that Jesus paid in full you, when he declared, it is finished. Yes. He said, it's paid in full yes. for you, so receive it now glory. in Christ's name. Glory, glory, Amen. glory, God. Glory. Well, if you are blessed by programs like Move Your Mountain, or maybe you enjoy our lineup of, we have a number of programs we produce right here in house. Hope Today is our flagship program, the Origins program, Hard Questions, Sister to Sister, Nashville Today, Dashing Dish. There's such a lineup. We could not produce them or air them to you without your help, without your prayers and your partnership. And then of course we have our lineup of national programs, David Jeremiah, and we have uh, of course Joyce Meyer and the 700 Club, mm -hmm. Pastor Jeffers and, and Charles Stanley. I mean, we've got so, so many. I know you have a favorite like I do, but we need your help. We honestly, sincerely need your help to continue bringing those programs faithfully to you. Cornerstone Television, we're celebrating our 44th anniversary this year. We've done nothing since the inception of this ministry but one thing, and that is stay true to our vision, bringing the gospel, bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. Let me give you our address. It's Cornerstone Television Network, CTVN. We're at One Signal Hill Drive. We're in Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. And we're gonna thank you in advance yes, yes. for your faithful prayers and support. God bless you. Well, we talk about miracles. We've got two of them right here. Yeah. We've got Gary. I like that name. He <laughs> gave his heart to the Lord Thank Jesus God. Christ. 
And God. Scott rededicated his heart to Jesus. There's yes. a party yes. going on in heaven yes, today. Yes, yes, yes. And, and when Pastor Gary invites you to participate with us at Cornerstone, that's what you're being invited to that's participate good. in. That's good. New life, new birth, hell being plundered and heaven being populated. So thank you so much for supporting the Lord's work. Thank you, Gary and Scott, for responding to what God is doing in your heart. And we're gonna be That's praying right. for you guys to continue yeah. to live a life full of power and miracles and righteousness because that what God has called you to. So welcome to the family. Amen. Well, we're gonna head over to the altar while Pastor Rebecca sings for us a great song, Raise a Hallelujah. Raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I'll raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody, yes it is. I raise a hallelujah. And heaven comes to fight for me. Oh, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Pastor Rebecca, our yeah. 
our melody, our song's a weapon. It is, and I love being able to use that weapon against the enemy because there are so many times when he tries to bring destruction and defeat into our lives. And instead of just taking that on and accepting it, begin to praise the Lord, begin yes. to worship yes. him who has conquered every battle, every giant that we face, he has already conquered it. And when we begin to praise him, we start to see those mm -hmm. situations change in our lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think about the garment of praise yes. for the spirit of heaviness, no matter what is going on, That's right. we have the ability to give God a praise. That hallelujah, Amen. raise that hallelujah. Amen. You know, and, 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 you know, Joseph, when he was thrown in a pit, he was betrayed by his mm. brothers. The Bible says that it was Judah that got him out of the pit and Judah means praise. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're sitting there and you're feeling betrayed by your closest brothers and sisters and family, or, or maybe you just feel like you're in a pit of despair or depression. I want to encourage you as much Jesus. as you can muster, find that garment of praise and it will lift you out of that pit. And you know what? God will do the rest of the heavy Amen. lifting. Amen. Amen. A singing Christian is a victorious Christian. <laughs> Don't let the enemy steal your song or steal your praise. Amen. Well, many, many, many of you have called. Many of you have written. We've got all your letters, all of your prayer requests here on the altar of the Lord today. We're going to lift them up to the Lord. Even if you haven't had a chance to call or write, that's all right. There's no distance in the Holy Spirit. So just join your faith with us today yes, while we yes, go to yes. the Lord in prayer. Pastor Myra, would you begin for us? Father, we do thank you and we yes. praise you because you, we have this privilege and power to pray and believe you by faith. Thank you for the supernatural responses to all the prayer requests that have come in. Thank you for each one who's had faith mm -hmm. and called in or wrote in yes. or even right now are just believing you to move on their behalf. And we pray right now that you will be glorified in their lives and we give you glory for it in advance. You, we God. give you glory because we know it is done. Yes, yes, yes. Would you head over to the piano for us, please? Father, we just glorify you. You are great you are so and you are wonderful. mighty. Lord, you are all powerful. You are our sustainer. You're the one who lifts us up whenever we are feeling down and burdened. And God, because of that, we know we can come and seek your face and we can present these needs to you as they are here on this altar today. And God, we ask that for every need that is here represented, God, that you would begin to let those that have called in, that have written in, Lord, that have, have, have just poured out their hearts, even on computer, God, that they've, they've emailed, God, Lord, I pray that those needs that they have sent in, Father, that you would just begin to let them see that there is a shifting going yes, on in their yes. lives. Father, that you are breaking chains. God, you're the only one who can do it. That is why we are coming to you. You are the great physician. So God, right now you are healing those who said there is no, there's no cure for what I have. The doctors have said there's no cure. There's no help for me. God, you are healing in the name of Jesus right now. And we trust that you are doing that, God. We have confidence in you. Lord, we thank Thank you that right now, Lord, those that have are coming in broken homes, God, they're, they're laying those needs before you. They want their families back together. They want their relationships back together. Maybe there's a mom that's called in, God, or that's even watching right now that is just broken. This is Mother's Day. This is supposed to be a good time when her family's together. And God, she's looking at it and her family's in shambles. I pray right now that this would be a Mother's Day that would mark their family. Yes. God, that they would see that you have brought restoration and God, that you would bring them together. Every divisive thing that have caused them to go, go apart from one another, that you would let that go in the name of Jesus and that you would bring them back, unify them, God. Bring them together with the bonds of love in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for destroying every power of darkness, every power of Satan, giving victory to your people today. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just, I lift up all the mamas right now, Lord God. All those, all those mothers that have, have toiled and given and sacrificed and, and shown agape love, Lord God, to the children that you have blessed them with so that they could be strong and be brought up in a fear and an admonition of the Lord. I bless those mothers right now. And, and I bless those mothers who feel like they, they didn't do the greatest job or they feel like maybe they let their kids down. God, I declare and decree over them right now a spirit of joy 
joy and a spirit of success, Lord God, that you are reminding them that they are beloved by you and that you are working and moving in their lives. I, I pray for the mothers who have prodigals right now. And we just lift up all of the young people who are far from you that their mothers are praying for right now. God, I thank you today that I, that I am the product of a praying mother. And I, I decree and declare right now that those prayers are being answered. And this Mother's Day, mothers are going to have their children sitting next to them in church, Lord God. And I thank you today for those moms that maybe you're trying and they just can't uh, seem to get pregnant. Lord, I pray for a supernatural blessing on their lives thank as well. And Lord, I just lift up all of the mothers. None of us would be here today without a mom. So we just thank you for moms. We thank you for their love, their nurturing, their care, and their support. And we do ask you to bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to continue to pray over the requests while Pastor Myra leads us in a time of worship. Yes. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Stone Television exists to spread the good news through Bible-based programs and a fully staffed prayer line. Through CTVN, lives are saved, hearts, minds, and bodies are healed, and Jesus is lifted high. We can't do this work without you. Would you consider sending a gift this month to keep the gospel moving forward with power? When you give, we'll send you Listen, Love, Repeat, which present scriptural examples of those who lived alert, including Jesus, who noticed those who least expected to be seen, gives creative ideas for showing love to friends and family, suggests practical ways to reach out to the lonely, marginalized outcast, helps you comfort the grieving, and so much more. Ask for your copy of Listen, Love, Repeat when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Thank you. 